Welcome, everybody, to Coming Home with John Allen. This is the segment called Coming Home Commentary. And welcome, everybody, to Coming Home with John Allen. I'm your host, John Allen, and we are now at the segment Coming Home Commentary. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the issue of talking too much or not enough, or is it just right? Talking about racism. Let me turn you on to a clip first, and then we'll get to some commentary afterwards. Here you go. What I've seen in the U.S. is that there has been a reversal. There's a lot more focus, especially amongst the left, on color, race. Do you know why? But but it doesn't matter why. Oh, it does, but it but, does, but my friend. But, but it thing, does, ma- it does matter why. I have to interrupt you. It matters because it's a shame things are still not equal. The playing field is not level, it depends. Not, not in America and also not here in Norway. And as long as it's unlevel, the, the discussion then must I- be had. Otherwise, there will be no change. Well, let's have a little bit of commentary. Joining me now is James Grasso. James, you've seen the clip more than once. What are your thoughts? Can we, can we fix racism? Can we fix racism without talking about it? it no. Cer- certainly not. Um, can we fix racism? Boy, do I wish. But um, no, it, I think the biggest problem here, um, you know, as evidenced by your guest there, he's talking about how it's fo- a focus of the left wh- that is talking about racism and, and race, when really it, it's more the right that's focusing on it, but they're focusing on it in a silent and kind of angry way that it's what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's well, there's certainly the perpetrators of, of racism these days. Are they not? They're the ones that are keeping it going. And yet they say we shouldn't talk about it. Yeah, that, precisely. Precisely. They're making it blatantly obvious that, hi, <laughs> we're racists, but we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to to put give it any any thought or any airtime on TV. Instead, we're going to project. We're going to project that information over to the left and it's it's classic. It's absolutely classic projection in this regard. Well, and it's quite the audacity that they uh, put out there, this this narrative that racism should not be spoken of, and yet they are the main perpetrators of it. Now, are there racist Democrats or racist left-leaning people? Of course there are. Of but course. in today's yeah. politics of the United States, if we look at uh, – Clan members, far right extremists, well, right extremists, uh, perpetrators of racism, neo Nazis, they certainly are not supporting Joe Biden. They're supporting that other guy who's trying to run against him. Yeah. And I mean, the fact that there are openly, you know, like open Nazis out there in the world again, like it blows my mind that people can stand on a corner, like in Florida recently, yes, there was across that bridge, uh, a protest. Standing on that mm-hmm, bridge, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, with full swastikas and full, like, we're Nazis. It's like, why? (laughs) Well, I have to give it to them. They at least were not masks. They weren't wearing masks or or some sort of, you know, covering their faces. At least they were standing forward and stating their case, crazy uh, as it is. But what is this thing? Where, Where do you think this comes from, this narrative that says that we are not to speak about these things? Because if we speak about it, then we acknowledge it. I think that's really where the right. So they're trying to write themselves out of the responsibility issue. Well, yeah. Look at how they're whitewashing history all over the place. They're sure. trying to get rid of. They're, they're they're standing up against critical race theory, which isn't even a thing. They're standing up against uh, uh, like bisexual and gay and lesbian and transgender kids all over the place because oh, we don't want to deal with that. I know it's not racism, but it kind of is. It's 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 sexism. It's it's genderism whatever you want to call it um they're they're attacking anything and everything they can that isn't the nuclear white family yeah yeah right and it is and it's quite frightening that they expect i mean people can believe what they want people can raise their children the way they want but what frightens me is it's, it's twofold it's one that there are so many people in key positions because i think numbers wise uh, the vast majority of America think that those right wing extremists, those people that have those racist uh, thoughts and ideologies, that racist mindset. Most of us think that those people are nuts. Mm-hmm. What scares me, though, is that they are there are quite a few of them who are in positions of power. And I'm not just talking about at the federal level or even the state level. I'm talking about 
local government, um, oh, yeah, school sheriffs, school and, school yeah. boards, mm-hmm. school boards. You know, uh, they want to talk so much about grooming children, about indoctrinating children, and yet here they are doing quite an effective. It's almost fascinating to watch how effective they are at taking over school boards and injecting their right wing agenda. And when I say right wing agenda, I'm talking extreme right wing Mm -hmm. agenda because there's nothing wrong with being on the right side of politics and social issues. No, of course not. That's how we have discourse. Exactly. But it's when it gets crazy. It's when you see a Mm -hmm. bunch of shaved headed Nazis standing on a bridge on an overpass in, in Florida openly shouting out the things that they, that, that they shout out. And it's quite obvious that they are supporters of the Republican Party agenda. Yeah, the GOP has become the MAGA at this point. Well, not entirely. The, the, the MAGA side is a cult, if you ask. Well, me. it is. But I have to push back and say that I think it has entirely taken over because look at the front runner for the Republican Party right now. It's Donald Trump. It's Donald Trump. I hate to say his name, but it's Donald Trump. Uh, He is the front runner. Uh, The MAGA faction of the Republican Party has now become the Republican Party. And to me, that grand old party, those old Mm -hmm. school Reaganists. Now, there's a lot to 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 debate and 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 shoot down when it comes to Reaganism. But we we could go down that road for hours. But at least it wasn't uh, it it, it wasn't evil to the core. It wasn't radical as the MAGA movement is, but that grand old party is now the faction and the mm-hmm. faction has become the party. It's scary. Yeah. No, it, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. I mean, it's, it's the extremists calling out everybody else for being extremists when they aren't right. Yeah. They, I, I love it when they talk about the radical left in America, like the radical left in America doesn't exist. Right. It, it, well, it does, but it's so small. It, it exists. It's, yeah, it's not this organized faction that they make it out to be. Um, they talk about Antifa all the time. Well, but but who who is that? Where well, is not the only leadership? that, what the hell's wrong with being anti-fascist? <laughs> there was once once upon a time, I want to say my grandmother was in her twenties when Ant, Antifa, so to speak, did did a job. Yeah, it's called World World, World World War Two. It's called World War Two, and we all got behind that. So, uh huh. It used to be okay to punch a Nazi. Well, but but isn't the right, isn't the political and social right very good at taking these terms, such as Antifa, which is short for anti-fascist? That Mm -hmm. should be a good thing, but they turn it into something bad. They've taken, they've done the same thing with 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 uh, critical race theory, which Mm -hmm. no one ever heard of, and there's a reason for that because it's not prevalent in. Mm-hmm. American schools uh, from from kindergarten to, to, to 12th grade. It's not it, it, it's never been an issue until the Republican Party decided to take that word CRT or critical race theory and turn it into a weapon, which they've done very well. Another thing is woke. There was no such mm-hmm. thing as wokeism when I was a kid. I'm a little bit older than you, but before it was just woke. <laughs> oh no, oh, check it, out that it, brother over there. That, that brother is woke, and that was a mm-hmm. good thing, meaning he was wise, he was socially yes. conscious, he helped people, or she, he or she helped you. They were awake. Exactly. They were, it was their a, eyes were their open. Eyes and they were, were open. seeing yes. things. Yes. Yes. They were perceptive, and mm-hmm. now the, the 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 right has taken woke and turned it into it's almost a political movement. But again, it doesn't exist. I don't see this woke movement however maybe we have to fault the left a little bit for also taking over that term and trying to make something out of it i don't know well i think a couple things about what you just said one is the republican party has weaponized marketing they are amazingly good yeah. at coming up with these stupid catchphrases yeah. and these things that are they're let's, let's give them a hand because they, they are stick. good they yeah, are good. and they <laughs> stick with people. And when you have a cult leader running a cult, that's how you keep people in it: is you give them catchphrases and you give them something to talk about that may or may not actually make any sense or be grounded in reality. Right. But they have their talking points. Now, do that? Can they back those talking points up with any kind of? Oh, I don't know. Facts? No. 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 Or examples? Maybe one ever. <laughs> Right. But you talk about like the grooming of kids and, the, and you know, banning of like the, the drag show reading time for kids. Right. OK, let's look at the statistics and say, hmm, how many drag queens have molested children versus how many Catholic priests or white politicians 
and I don't see anybody banning Sunday mass. No. And I'm not saying they should, but I'm no. just, I'm looking for some consistency in their rhetoric. Exactly. I'm looking for some, a, a solid foundation in their dogma. And it's just not there. At this point, I'm just waiting for the Republican Party to declare themselves a religion so they can be tax free and just yeah. be done with it. Well, I, I say this all the time. If there were Republicans of number with a conscience that carried some weight, then there would be a third political party. Oh, and there absolutely should. Yeah. Um, back to what I was talking about earlier. We've got the 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 right, the MAGA right, which is right. It's it, it's it's over there. It, it, <laughs> right. Um, then you've got the Democratic Party, which is actually centrist. Yes. It's not even really left. It's like moderately right, like just barely. <laughs> That's pointing at uh, the, the the basic lack of perspective in America in general, not mm -hmm. just on the political spectrum, but socially as well. Uh, perspective, you know, uh, here we are, we live in Norway, and we're looking at our country now from a different angle with a different set of experiences. And that perspective tells us that uh, the Democratic Party is not this far left agenda that people make it out. To not be. in the slightest. I mean, even Bernie Sanders. I mean, yeah, he's left, but <laughs> he's, he's still not, not socialist uh, left. No, not even he's close. not. Well, but that's yeah. <laughs> another example of the right bringing that word socialist into. Yeah, there's nothing wrong into, with that. Well, well they, they managed to bring it into <laughs> today's vocabulary and twist it into a mm -hmm. weapon. Again, they're very, very good at that. Uh, to sum it up, uh, the question was, can we fix racism without talking about it? I have to say no. Agree? Disagree? No. Oh, absolutely agree. It has I mean, to be talked about. It has you, to. If if you don't talk about it, if you keep it silenced, then it will fester and it will continue to grow. Well, it's an untreated sore. Yeah, uh, it, it is a cancer that will continue to grow and take over its host entirely. And talking about it puts it in the corner. It Amen. makes it smaller. It 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 brings it out into the light. It makes it woke, <laughs> and it uh, it makes sure that. That conversation continues because without talking about it, without raising your voice, without standing in the street and screaming about it, nobody is going to pay it any attention. You know, the civil rights movement in the 60s succeeded because people got out there and marched for their rights and said, we're, we're fed up with this shit and we're going to continue to make sure that you hear our voices, whether you like it or not. Well, let's get back on the streets and get to marching again, peacefully, but loudly and effectively. Thank you so much for your commentary. James Grasso, everybody. Uh, this has been Coming Home Commentary. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Remember, you can listen to this on any podcast platform of your choice or watch it on YouTube. You can also get it at johnallenpod.com. That's J-O-H-N-A-L-A-N-P-O-D.com. You'll also find my audio book there. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.